All right, guys. Well, um, we'll get started there. So, um, basically, guys, thank you so much. Uh, firstly, for jumping on, logging on to tonight's webinar. Um, so, if you haven't heard, the topic of tonight is just five do's and five don'ts for optimal sort of weight loss or specifically fat loss. Okay. Uh, so, for a few of you guys, I'm sure I've spoken to you about these points, but a um, bit of revision as well. Now, as we're going, guys, feel free to drop a question down in the comment box for me, please. Um, if I don't get to it um, straight away, or I don't at least acknowledge it, just give me like a thumbs up or put your hand up as well, um, just so I can, uh, in case I've missed it, that way it will sort of notify me now. Um, before we start, guys, I just want to quickly say, with everything that I'm going to talk about tonight, this is kind of secondary to the two most important things. So basically, I'll give you a freebie, um, a freebie do and a freebie don't. Do what your coach tells you to do in terms of your recommended training volume, your training intensity, do what your coach tells you to do. Don't lie to your coach, don't lie to yourself, okay? Make sure that you are doing what we tell you to do, you're putting in the effort we tell you to, and you're not then breaking those rules and then coming to us and telling us you're not, because it's counterintuitive. So the, uh, there's nothing worse, guys, than someone coming to me and saying, oh, I'm hitting my macros, um, I don't know what's going wrong, and I and then I freak out, what the hell, like, what, what do we have to do when I start looking at all this stuff and really we're just not hitting the foundation which is hitting our training days, hitting our intensity, hitting our macros, hitting our calories. So that is your absolute must to start with. But um, there are things that we can do to further weight loss, further success and that's where this comes in. So uh, we'll get started there guys. So we'll start with the do's. We'll start with the um, do's first off the bat. Now um, I want to start guys with uh, greens. So green vegetables being specific. Now, I'm a huge advocate for green vegetables. Um, remember that obviously you still need to hit your macros, you still need to make sure you're hitting your carb totals, uh, but they should make up the bulk of your um, of your carbs, or at least in my opinion, pretty much most of your carbs should come from uh, vegetables in particular. Now, so firstly with our greens, um, pretty much all your greens are good. I have a preference to um, green vegetables such as bok choy, silver beet, spinach, kale, uh, obviously broccoli, broccolini, um, as opposed to vegetables like uh, zucchini, celery, iceberg lettuce, rocket. Um, those ones aren't as great. Nothing wrong with them per se, they're just not as nutrient dense. So if you find that you're already spending a lot of money and um, on your vegetable bills and that sort of thing, you don't want to be buying too many of these vegetables because they're not going to go as far in terms of how much you can get from them. So stick to your broccoli, your spinach, your bok choy, your silver beet, your kale. Um, those are probably my big ones that I like the most. I've broccolini added a bit as well because I quite like broccolini. Um, the reasons why, guys, is we will firstly, to add fat loss, we want to be as clean as possible. We want to aim for at least 25 grams of fiber coming from vegetables like grains. Um, the benefit of the greens is they also are rich in chemicals that help uh, detoxify our system. So the idea being, guys, is the cleaner we are, the less likely we are to store fat. So not necessarily burn fat, but it's going to help us to prevent from storing excess fat. Okay, so we want to be clean. That's where the fiber comes in. There's chemicals found in green uh, vegetables in particular that actually help uh, getting rid of certain kinds of plastics and metals in our body that can actually lead to fat storage long term. So. Greens are a must from that part. Um, we also, guys, want to make sure that when we, um, <coughs> excuse me, the other reason we're having our veggies is that it leads to a more, uh, actually leads to encouraging your body to burn fat for energy as opposed to carbs. So if I were to get, say, 50 grams of carbs from green vegetables versus 50 grams of carbs from white bread, I'm more likely to be burning fat throughout the day on the green vegetable carbs. So even though I'm still hitting my macros, I'm actually going to be in a better position to burn fat on the veggies than on the bread as it's burned too quickly, it's absorbed too quickly and therefore the body can store it readily because it's it's broken down and it's ready for energy so there's an abundance of energy first and foremost and the body can just store that. Cool, so that's my number one. So that's, um, that's a big do guys is hit your green vegetables. Nothing um, overly difficult with that concept there of hitting our green vegetables. Um, so that should be, like I said, that should be a big part of your carb intake. And if you're on a humongous amount of carbs, I mean, you can only eat veggies, but we want, obviously, our bulk to come from that. 
Cool. Kicking forward from there, let's go. Uh, next one I want to talk about, guys, is sleep. So sleep is a must. Now, it's a funny one, guys, because to be fair, there isn't a lot of scientific evidence to prove uh, what I'm going to say about sleep. However, there's a massive trend in the fact that we find that people who are getting enough sleep uh, have higher levels of testosterone than people who don't. People who get enough sleep burn fat more readily than people who don't. People that get enough sleep are leaner, stronger, faster, more athletic, better mood, all the above. Now, there's not a lot of evidence to suggest why um, I would put it to you that it comes down a lot to our hormonal balance. So there is a correlation between the amount of sleep you get and certain hormones that are produced or not produced as an effect. Now, the idea being there is if it leads to imbalances, uh, as we know from previous webinars and blogs, uh, unbalanced or sort of um, hormones that are out of sync can actually lead to fat gain or it can lead to preventing fat loss. So that's a really easy way to look at it. So just plain and simple, if you don't want the science fine, that's all right, just sleep, okay? Now, when I say that, it's a minimum of seven hours we want to get, okay? We want to really aim for seven to nine hours of sleep per night and you want it to be the best quality sleep as possible. So the things that can upset sleep is having stimulants before bed, so having too much caffeine before bed. Um, you're not going to get the same effect. Even if you are asleep, you still won't get the same out of your sleep. Um, if you have too much food before bed, that can have an effect of it. If you have too much sugar in particular, so your blood sugar is really high, so insulin before bed, that will affect the quality of your sleep. Um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Other factors with our sleep as well, guys, we want to sleep in a dark, quiet room, so we don't want to be in a sleep with a room where there is sort of a light on or the red off your TV. If you've got a TV in your room, that little red that shows the TV's off, all of that's actually picked up in the skin and it actually tells the body or the body registers that as it being sun outside, so it starts to think it's the daytime, it's not time to sleep, so it starts to produce the wrong hormones. So we want to sleep in a quiet, dark space, we want to aim for seven to nine hours, we want to avoid stimulants. Um, and if you have trouble sleeping, a really good way to do that, guys, is take a magnesium supplement. Anyone who's tried that, um, the only reason it wouldn't work is if you're extremely deficient in magnesium. For most people, just a little bit deficient. Magnesium is a great supplement to take uh, before bed to really help you not off. I know it's a good one for me if I'm stressed out, come exam time, that sort of thing. I feel wide before bed. Magnesium helps me um, lights out. Right, guys, so uh, moving on there. Um, Pretty much on that exact point of zinc and magnesium, that's my next one, is make sure your zinc and magnesium levels are sufficient, okay? Uh, I try not to, to recommend too many supplements, because um, I, I used to recommend heaps of supplementations, guys, and it just became very expensive for my clients, and it became really stressful you feel like you're taking everything from a pill. So the two that I recommend are zinc and magnesium. The reasons why, um, magnesium I've talked about uh, a lot is that it, Everyone's deficient in magnesium. I mean, before I get to the, the benefits of it, everyone's deficient. I think we've got the third least rich magnesium soil in the world, Australia being. Um, and in terms of our zinc, we don't store zinc. So we need to be getting zinc consistently. Or we're going to have deficiencies there. So the idea being is like you can store a lot of minerals in the body, you don't store zinc. So if you have a day without zinc, then you don't get the benefits from that day. Um, now, magnesium and zinc, we find them in sort of... Um, we can find them in seeds and nuts, meat, root vegetables. You get them in a lot of foods. Your body's ability to absorb them differs person to person. It comes down to genetics, health, age, gender, body fat, a whole bunch of reasons. So basically, um, the overall health of most people and the ability of most people to absorb these minerals is quite low. So that's why I recommend supplementation because what you get from your food generally isn't enough and then of that little amount you get, you don't absorb as much as you can, so we want to obviously increase that by leading to supplementation. Now, the reason we need zinc and we need magnesium, uh, zinc boosts um, hormones that actually help keep our metabolic rate high, helps us recover from training, helps us recover from injuries, um, it actually helps keep us lean and athletic. So zinc's a really big one for that. It also prevents um, a ritual in the body where the body takes our testosterone and converts it into estrogen. Now that's bad if you're a dude because you're going to lose your gains or you're rather not going to get the same gains because you're losing testosterone. It's also bad if you're a female because you're going to end up with unbalanced estrogen, number one, which leads to fat legs, um, fat bum, that sort of thing. And it also is going to then obviously um, lead to poor recovery time, um, decrease sort of energy in your session. Um, it also is going to prevent your strength gains as well. Okay, so big one there for zinc. Now, magnesium is responsible for just about every uh, 
sort of big chemical process in the body. So we need magnesium just about everything. So uh, there's there's a few, I think there's a blog out on magnesium. So if you want to know more, guys, jump on that one. I won't go into too much detail because I won't shut up about it if I get stuck into it. Um, basically, we need magnesium if you want to have uh, balanced hormones, whether they be your estrogens, you want to have lower cortisol, you want to have more testosterone production, what have you, magnesium will be your best friend. So make sure you're getting um, enough magnesium in your diet. Alrighty guys, uh, kicking on from there. We're going to talk a little bit about hydration. This is a really simple one guys, but you'd be amazed actually how overall a hydration is in terms of being on a weight loss protocol number one and number two. Uh, you'd be amazed as well actually how effective it is or how sort of bad it is as well to have chronic dehydration when you're on a fat loss protocol. It's really tough. So the body doesn't respond well to it. So because all our cells need um, water to function, as soon as we have a lack of water, um, everything goes wrong. Our body's ability to uh, actually allow certain uh, chemical um, rituals to go through. So essentially minerals entering and leaving the cell becomes impaired once you haven't got enough water coming in. So I won't give you too much of a concern, but basically um, when it comes to actually breaking down fat, um, when it comes down to actually performing in the gym, so actually exercising, everything's impaired by being dehydrated. So we want to be as hydrated as possible. Pretty much, guys, aim for three liters um, a day. Uh, if we're training realistically, two liters plus one liter um, for the exercise that we do per hour, that's kind of your gold standard rule or your kind of your go-to rule. Realistically, that might be more than you need, but it's, it's not going to be bad. I've never had anyone have an adverse reaction to having three liters of water a day. Realistically, you could have probably even got up to four liters a day without having any negative effect, okay, besides possibly going to the bathroom all day, okay? So I, I tend to say aim for three liters. Um, if you want to get more specific, uh, you can check in with one of your coaches. They can do it based on your body weight um, and your age, gender, body fat percentage. There's a few things you need to calculate to do it, so I won't give you out a rule because it's a bit more complicated, but Three liters is kind of my, my go-to. Now, the other reason you want to be hydrated, guys, is that um, it'll improve the quality of your sleep, and it'll also improve the amount of um, androgen hormone production you have. So once again, those are the hormones that keep us lean, keep us athletic, help us burn fat, boost metabolism, and lean down. All righty. Um, just before I move on, I've got questions. My question has disappeared. All right, if you've asked a question, um, so Marie, I've got your question. I'm just going to find a way to get it back. It'll come back. I'm going to kick off <laughs> and hope, hopefully that, that question comes back. Um, guys, so we're looking at through there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, omega-3s and omega-6s. Now, once again, this is, a pretty this is probably the most complicated thing we'll talk about today. So feel free to drop me a question if you get stuck on this one. Um, so basically, with our omega-3s and our 6s, uh, in today's diet, we overeat omega-6s. Okay, so omega sixes are found more in our sort of our vegetable oils. So you know, obviously vegetable oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, that sort of stuff. Most processed foods are much higher in your omega six fats, um, and that tends to be the big reason why we've got so much more because our foods are being cooked in those types of oil. Our foods are contained just basically higher in omega sixes. Um, so we want to basically, number one, we want to boost omega-3s. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail with that one. What I will say is we will obviously want to have it come from mostly DHA and EPA as well, um, which is two of the different types of omega-3s you can get. So if you're going to buy, say, a fish oil um, supplementation, you want to make sure that it's got high amounts of the EPA and DHA as well. So it's about a 6 to 1 ratio that we're looking at through that one there. Um, with that as well, guys, is that I want to just make sure I've got my notes even clicking off. Yeah, we're all good. Um, with my ratio of three to sixes as well, if you have a diet too high in sixes and not high enough in threes, um, once again, we'll keep it as simple as possible. Basically, you're going to lead to inflammation. Okay, so what sixes do is sixes are really important for cell health and cell structure first and foremost. Um, but when there's too much um, sort of omega sixes, what it does is it actually leads to kind of, I suppose, uh, sort of an over-inflammatory response. So the body then becomes inflamed, um, and that leads to things like people who are prevalent always getting joint pain, whether it be like my knees a bit sore, my back's a bit sore, my neck's a bit sore now, or you just always seem to be sort of hot, or you get things like that. That can be related to having too much omega sixes. Omega three's job literally is to come down and kind of balance that out as well. The reason being that. 
we have um, negative responses from it is that people aren't getting the ratio for their threes to sixes. So we want to increase our threes. So we're getting our omega threes from things like our olive oil, um, coconut oil, fish oils, and other good sources of omega threes. That's the ones we want to look at. So m fats that are coming more from our vegetables, um, so I should say vegetables, more from our meat, sorry. Um, and if they're going to come from vegetables, things like olives, coconuts, not your, um, your kind of your generic vegetable oils, those ones. The ones that come from um, seeds and nuts, so seeds and nut oil usually you want to stay away from as well, only because they they oxidize quite quickly as well. Um, I'm going to get it wrong, but pretty much there was a statistic that showed pretty much all sort of sunflower, uh, peanut, vegetable oil, they're already rancid before you get them home. So as soon as you buy them off the shelf, they've already pretty much gone rancid, they don't last. Um, they oxidize really easily, so by the time you get them home and then you add, you cook them, you've pretty much killed all the nutrients in them anyway. So it's a very natured um, nutrient. Alrighty guys, so that is pretty much our do's. Now drop me a line if you got a little bit confused with the three to sixes, because like I said, that's probably the hardest part of what we've got today. Now, um, so shoot me through a message if you do need me to kind of clarify that any further. Um, now I've got a question here, do we take magnesium and zinc with food? Uh, yes you do, but you need to take it with certain types of food. Now I recommend to take it in the morning. Um, now this is where I might be a bad example. I have for breakfast, um, especially when I'm, um, when I'm being really strict with my food, is I'll have meat and nuts for breakfast. So that's another point entirely, but we'll just we'll roll on from that. I'll have half my meat first, then I'll take any supplements I'm on, then I'll have the other half of the meat and I'll finish with the nuts. That's just the way I do it. Now you don't want to have uh, magnesium and zinc supplements with dairy products, alcohol, um, you don't want to have it with anything that is really light, so you wouldn't have it with just like a piece of fruit. You want to have it with something that's a bit more hearty. So the reason being is the more empty your stomach is when you take them, um, kind of the more harsh your gut's going to be on those supplements, so they're going to get Kind of, um, you kind of get more of the you'll, you'll lose more of the nutrients basically being digested if you take it on an empty stomach. So have it with some hearty food, have it with you know a source of protein and a source of fat primarily. Make sure you you have a bit of water as well. Um, so you kind of put Marie, you put together before bed. Okay, can you kind of clarify on your question, will you please? Oh wait, what are the um, yeah, so if you can just clarify that question for me, I'll oh, kind of come from there. So I'll keep moving, guys, just to that three minute and we'll move on. So the don'ts are part of the webinar. This, this is um, a lot of these guys are really straightforward, but you'd be amazed at just how overlooked they get. And these these are all things you're gonna hear. And go, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that's that stuff I know I do that I just need to be told not to do. So hopefully um, we get the message across. Now basically, uh, the first one is a big one I talk about, and you know I can I can put my hand up and say I'm, I'm guilty of it from time to time as well. Is basically I want to avoid alcohol consumption as much as possible. Now I know at RBT one of the things we do say is we say look you can enjoy a glass of wine sort of here and there as long as a it fits your macros and you're hitting your calorie targets as well. Um, and look that is true, um, but the fact of the matter is, is if you have high expectations on yourself and your goals are um, really quite high in terms of what you want to achieve and in terms of especially if you want to do it in a small amount of time, um, cutting out your alcohol completely is going to be your biggest um, sort of friend for that one. Basically guys, um, alcohol has seven calories per gram and with that is it's absorbed so readily that it's actually the first thing utilized for energy. So pretty much is if you have alcohol with food as well, or if you're trying to burn body fat, the alcohol is just so much more readily used for energy um, that it's just going to go first. So it becomes the hierarchy in terms of what's burned first. So we're wasting all that potential uh, fat loss burning that we could have on alcohol. Alcohol, it also um, it lowers our metabolism, number one. It halts recovery, so it actually impairs um, sort of the, the body's ability to repair itself. So if you're recovering from an injury, or even if you're just done training and you're trying to get back to feeling good again, if you are having alcohol frequently, it's going to slow that down. It lowers your androgen hormones considerably, so it leads to weight gain in the abdomen, it leads to weight gain in the sort of uh, back of the thighs and bum area, it can help encourage that area. 
Um, and it's also going to lead to um, estrogenic imbalances as well, or at least it can lead to estrogenic imbalances as well. So pretty much, guys, you want to limit your alcohol consumption as much. Don't make the mistake as well. Oprah go, can I go three weeks without drinking and then have a massive bender? Uh, no, it's 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 one of those things where um, the stats are literally, if you have a really big Friday and you have like, quite a few drinks and you get basically hammered on a Friday night, your body is not back to itself in terms of chemical regularity and hormonal regularity till Wednesday. So one of the things I tell all my guys is that if they get drunk on a Friday night, their testosterone levels will not return to where they were on that Friday until Wednesday. So if they're going in with low testosterone and they get drunk and then come Monday, Tuesday when they're at the gym, they've got the testosterone of a 12-year-old girl. So realistically, if their goals include building mass, alcohol is not going to be their friend. Okay, alcohol, especially if you are um, quite um, intoxicated, and then you ingest foods like you know what do you do on a Friday night? You go for a kebab or Big Mac. Your body is going to be encouraged to store that. It's going to do it as sort of a defense mechanism. It's going to open up your cells. Your cells are just going to pull all those calories in. So it's actually going to lead to fat gain as well. So we don't want to do that. Okay, um, because most people, when told to not eat when they go out drinking is fine until they're out drinking and they go bugger it and <laughs> they then eat. So the best way to do it is just not be there in the first place. Okay guys, so um, it's going to be avoiding our alcohol consumption. Uh, number two I've got is avoid, avoid sorry, refined carbohydrates. Now my refined carbohydrates guys, um, we'll ke keep it simple and we'll just basically say foods that are high in sort of processed sugar. Okay, now with that it's Nothing I'm sure you guys are surprised to hear. The reason why you can still hit your macros eating um, refined sugars and that's bad is because the refined sugars um, pretty much the opposite of what I talked about in my green vegetables. They're absorbed way too quickly. Um, so there's all this abundance of energy. And the way I explain it to people is if, that if you're sitting on the couch and you have, let's say, a can of Coke, which is full of sugar, um, that's absorbed really quickly. There's suddenly an abundance of energy. Um, that can A, be utilized if you're about to start sprinting and doing vigorous exercise, which is why you have oranges at halftime in a football game, um, that you don't need because you're sitting on a couch. So your body's more likely to store it as fat. Now, when blood sugar levels um, go up, your body uh, releases insulin to manage the fact that your blood sugar levels are high. Now, without going into too much detail, high spikes of insulin leads to fat store. In particular, it leads to fat store in your abdomen and hip area. So if you have a stubborn sort of midsection that you're really struggling to lose weight on, cutting down your refined sugars is an absolute must. Like it's probably one of the big things I'd suggest you do if you have that area that's really stuck, is cut down your refined sugars, up your green veggies and up your water. So really making sure you're getting your fibrous carbs because they burn slower, they're going to decrease our insulin response. Um, cool. So just before I move on guys, just remember I wanted to mention if you are finding any of this is because a lot of this stuff is quite technical and I'm trying to motor through it because I want to get through as much as we can in the time that we've got. So if it is getting too complicated or you just you're left behind, shoot me a comment. I'm more than happy to kind of go over it again for you if I need to. Um, cool. So moving on from there. Um, now there was a webinar on this two weeks ago, so I don't need to go into too much, but big time basically is I want to avoid foods that I am intolerant to or sensitive to. Now basically if you missed that one, um, your big sort of foods for intolerances are fructose, gluten, lactose. Those are the sort of the products you have, and you've probably heard these before. Now, the simplest way to do it is that just listen to your body. If you notice that you have bread, and then um, after eating the bread, you get a runny nose, or you get swollen lips, or you start to sweat, or you just notice any kind of adverse reactions, whether it be a hot flush or what have you, um, remember that. Try a gluten removal diet, try a fructose removal diet, lactose removal diet. If you find that you are less bloated, you don't feel those sort of those same sort of side effects that you notice. If you get a massive loss in weight or you just suddenly you've lost weight in an area that you haven't been able to move from, it's a really good sign that you are intolerant to that food. Or at least if nothing else, you've just got a slight sensitivity to it. Um, basically, we don't want to um, – when we have foods that we're intolerant to or are sensitive to, long story short, um, is that we're going to upset our guts and we're going to upset our immune system. Okay, um, An upset gut and upset immune system both lead to increase in hormones that basically lead to fat storage. So I'm going to keep it as simple as that. So the science of finance is a bit more technical than that. I've dumbed down something very scientific, but long story short, um, if, you're having, if you are intolerant to gluten and you're eating too much of it, it's going to lead to weight gain Okay, because you're stressing basically um, all the bodily functions that we want to be running smoothly. Okay. 
Um, number next one, guys, that we want to do is I want to avoid processed food. Now, at RBT, we do talk about um, there's the 80-20 rule. Um, I usually tend to say if you can go for the 90-10, which means 80% um, clean, wholesome foods, and then 20% you can have processed. I tend to opt for more of a 90-10 personally, and that's just because that's what my body responds better to. Um, if I'm being really strict and I just lose quite a lot of weight quickly, I want to get as lean as I can quickly, I just will cut out processed food altogether. Um, the only exception I'll have is that I'll have a protein shake. That's pretty much the only thing that I'll have its process. Everything else is just meat and vegetables and nuts and seeds and um, a little bit of fruit if I can fit it into my uh, mac macros. So, guys, so with that, um, <clears throat> the reason we want to limit processed food is because, A, they're full of junk. Um, there's lots of chemicals and crap in there that actually upset a lot of um, the body's sort of processes and sort of hormones. I know I'm using a lot of chemical terms here. I apologize. I'll try to keep it simple. Um, but it upsets these, these processes that the body goes through that stresses the body out and the body um, will respond to any form of stress pretty much with uh, fat storage, which is annoying, but it's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, the other problem with processed foods is that they're usually very, very high um, GI and they're burned up very quickly, so there's suddenly an abundance of energy that's very quick and they're so calorie dense. If you were to look at you know, 200 calories worth of vegetables versus 200 calories of potato chips, like that wouldn't even you know, they like to about 10 the size. They're a lot, they're really, really dense in calories. So there's suddenly an abundance of calories and they don't really lead to satiety. So you can eat processed food without feeling full, but realistically you're getting a lot and a lot of calories. The other one, guys, is that the quality of the nutrients in processed food is gone. So we denature these nutrients, which means a lot of the good nutrients that may have once upon a time been in this food are now gone. And just because it's bad luck is that a lot of the bad ones stay in there and the good ones become bad ones. They get denatured so they're not um, absorbed properly or they can't interact with cells properly and that just then leads to impaired function. It can decrease your training. It can lead to um, upset sleep patterns. It massively lowers the health and the quality of your uh, liver so your liver becomes impaired from that and that leads to a whole bunch of other problems like immune problems and toxicity problems which then obviously leads to fat storage and depression and all kinds of other stuff. So processed foods just like I remember I did a seminar that was sort of on nutrition and one of the points the guy made was basically just like, just normal processed foods. I'm not that strict with it, but like I said, 80-20 is kind of where we should be sitting at with that, especially if we have a weight loss goal. Um, you don't want to be having too much processed food. It makes it really hard to lose fat unless you're just one of those magic people. So I should say disclaimer, some people's bodies can handle them fine, no problem. Well, I'm sure we all know at least one person that eats Maccas a few times a week and has ripped a um, six pack and we should be allowed to hate them so bugger them but unfortunately most people aren't one of them so that's just the way it is all we can do guys is do what our body's response to which is stay away from processed foods um, and next one guys now this one's probably the longest one that I'll talk about um, pretty much everything I've mentioned will tie into this one is we want to limit our stress now when I talk about stress, people go, "Well, I can't limit my stress because I work 14 hours a day, or you know, I kind of I manage a business, or I've got a really high stressful job, like I'm a lawyer, so you know, my there's lots of deadlines and stuff, and I'm always just super chronically stressed." Now, the better they can manage that, the better they'll actually have an ability to lose fat, because like I said, stress leads to fat storage. It's just a self-defense mechanism. It, I don't like to talk too much paleo sort of stuff, but pretty much the system being is that if we're a caveman and we're hunting poorly, we're going to be hungry, we're going to be stressed about the fact that we're not hunting well, the body will respond to that by storing weight because it's going to protect ourselves. So anything we eat, we're going to store as fat um, purely from the poor hunting. So if hunting's bad, um, we don't need to eat as much because we're storing more from what we're eating. So the body's clever like that. Um, unfortunately, we don't need that same defense mechanism, but we still have it. So the way we can um, we can manage that or we can monitor that is by just decreasing as much stress as possible. And stress is more than just um, financial stress or work stress or relationship stress. There's also chemical stress, which is what I've talked about with our processed food and our alcohol. Um, there's also stresses that come from being too toxic. There's stresses that come from um, sensitivities and intolerances. There's stresses that come from having unbalanced hormones. So for instance, if you've got an, um, an estrogenic problem, where they're not balanced, the body's going to respond to that with stress. If you are having way too much sugar in your diet and you're boosting your insulin levels way too high as a response, the body's going to respond to that with stress. So 
there's all these little ways that you don't even consider stress, the body will respond to with stress and therefore will respond to with cortisol production and then it will lead to fat storage. So this is pretty scientific stuff that I'm dumbing down guys and I'm trying to make it as simple as possible but in a really brief kind of um, overview, we just need to, you just need to think, you just need to know the science. You just need to know that stress leads to fat storage. The less stress we are, the better we are going to be do that. Now, your best friends for these sort of guys will be obviously trying to limit your exposure to stress, but also increasing things like sleep, making sure you're getting enough good quality protein. Um, whilst I'm on that point, I'm quickly just going to kind of make the point is that uh, the problem with I've sort of mentioned this to a lot of the Hawthorne members, but if you're not or you haven't heard it, is that the problem with protein shakes and um, Quest bars and protein bars and that sort of stuff, as our only source of protein, the reason why that's bad is because um, like processed food is denatured um, macronutrients. So the nutrients aren't utilized as effectively as protein, say, from you know sort of beef or chicken. And we need to be getting good quality um, protein sources in to actually help regulate those factors. So just wanted to kind of fit that point in there. So if you are chronically stressed, um, up your good quality protein. So organic meat is my first place that I start with when I want to increase my good quality protein. Um, we want to basically have um, lots of androgen boosting hormone, hormone foods as well to kind of limit that stress factor. So I want to have one serve of seafood a week. I want to have my green veggies, which we've already talked about. And I want to have foods that are rich in antioxidants and so things like um, sort of dark chocolate, um, and berries, so things that people can get behind, um, rich in antioxidants, and they actually will help manage cortisol levels. Make sure, though, if you are going to be having them, that if they are high in sugar, you're having them post exercise where your body can actually justify having high levels of sugar, okay? Especially if you're looking for weight loss, which is what we're talking about. So, that is my five do's and don'ts. Like I said, your high, your priority should be your training volume is at what your coach has recommended, um, your training intensity is high enough, your macros and calories are calculated for you by your coach and you're hitting them. So you're basically doing everything that your coach tells you to and you're not lying to yourself or your coach. Um, sorry if that sounds harsh, but it's one of those things. Because like, honestly, that's that's the big two you need to nail. Um, these are all sort of secondary to that, but they will make a difference. Um, now, like I said, I've tried to run over quite a lot of information there, so that was about half an hour that we've sort of spoken for and there's a lot of information in that. So if you have questions, um, flip me through questions now. Um, I'll sort of just keep going with some stuff. Um, like I said, put a hand up. I don't know why my question bar is like disappearing so really small. Um, is it okay to take magnesium and zinc together before bed? Um, but yeah, yeah, it is. That's fine. Um, now, that looks like so far we haven't got any other questions or any new questions yet. So, like I said, I'll give it a few seconds. Anyone who's listening who wants to ask a question? If not, we might finish there. So, I suppose just while I'm doing that, I'll just kind of go for a bit of a summary. Is, guys, basically, there's nothing here that's overly complicated or overly complex. Um, in terms of doing the science behind it, it might be complex, but don't worry about the science, just do basically what I said. So you want to have um, you know, more um, omega-3s in your diet. You want to have uh, more green vegetables in your diet. You want to have uh, making sure you're sleeping your seven to nine hours. Um, Kate, I'll answer your question tomorrow. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> Zinc and magnesium are two of the most important minerals, um, and ironically, they're also two of the most commonly deficient minerals that we have. Um, we want to avoid refined sugars, alcohol, foods that we're intolerant to, foods that are processed, foods that we're sensitive to, and we want to limit our stress. Um, if you can pretty much, the don'ts are the big ones. If you hit the don'ts, you'd be amazed actually how much of a difference that'll make to your body composition. Um, and your do's are really easy. now. If you need further clarification on the do's, like if you're not sure about what foods are going to be best suited for you in terms of omega-3s, or if you're a bit worried about maybe you're getting sixes from some things that I didn't cover today, your best point of contact is your coaches. So pretty much every RBT has at least one person that I think has got a really good knowledge base on nutrition, so they'll be able to help you out. Pretty much all the coaches should be able to help you out with um, most of this stuff though anyway. Um, so if there's no more questions, guys, which I think we might be done. Um, we'll pretty much cap it there. Thank you so much for your attendance. Um, all the Hawthorne guys, thank you for jumping on. I'll see you tomorrow. Otherwise, everyone else, go, um, 
thank you for your attendance again. Any questions, yeah, either get it to me or get it to your appropriate coaches. Enjoy the rest of your evening, guys, and I will see you next. Oh, wait, did we get a question? Why is my question bar so small? Sorry. Ah, oh, it's just, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Alrighty, guys, cool. Um, that's it there, guys. Thank you so much for your time. I'll catch you next time.